Aloha, my name is Tara Coyote, and I am inspired to share a piece with you about grief that I wrote recently. Just a little bit about myself. I've experienced a lot of grief in the last seven and a half years with two of my closest friends dying young from cancer, many other friends dying young from cancer, and my parents just passed in the last year and a half. I lead grief rituals with the horses, teaching equine facilitated learning along with the grief work. And um, part of my mission here on earth in experiencing so much grief, I feel like is to help demystify it for people and really understand as a culture that we need to express grief to release it and to be healthy in our bodies. So I'm gonna read a piece that I wrote last week and I will probably cry during part of it because it's very emotionally charged and may my tears be an inspiration for you to feel and express your grief. Today I woke up pondering how culture would be better served if we allow ourselves to feel and express grief. When my mother was pregnant with me, my grandfather died a sudden and tragic death. When I was growing up, whenever the topic of him came up, my mother would clam up and quietly start shedding tears. I did not understand as a child why the mention of a man I never met had such a profound effect on my usually stoic New England mother. My brother and I learned to be careful to not talk about him as it would have this surprising effect on her. I also did not understand that she hadn't had a chance to properly grieve him after his death because she was pregnant with me. My mother had had four traumatic miscarriages before she had me. As she didn't want to lose another baby, which was embryonic me, she chose to not make the long journey from Northern California to New Hampshire to attend the funeral. It was her love for me that prevented her from grieving her beloved father with her other family members. As my own father died one year ago, I now properly understand the pivotally painful effect the death of a father can have upon a daughter. My father was my world in many ways, and I'm sure my mother felt the same thing about her dad. Recently on an airplane flight, I watched the new release, A Man Called Otto, starring Tom Hanks. In this movie, his lifelong wife had just died. As he was besieged with grief, he yearned to die to be with her. As I watched this movie, I understood some of the complex and heart-shattering emotions my father must have felt after his wife of almost 60 years passed in November 2021. He was absolutely bereft without her. My brother and I helplessly watched as he self-sabotaged himself in various horrifying ways. One night he drank and drove and almost drove off a cliff. Fortunately, a tree perched at the end Fortunately, a tree perched at the edge of a bank prevented his bright red sports car from sliding off the perilous bank. My brother and I both felt powerless. There was no way we could fill the ginormous hole in his heart after her death. My mother was his queen since he was 24 years old. He loved us dearly, but there was no way we could heal his broken heart. As his daughter, this deeply hurts. If I could have saved him, I would have. This was not his nor my destiny though. While watching the movie, hot tears rolled down my cheeks as I truly comprehended the profound loss he must have felt after her death. I am an independent type and the longest relationship I've been in has been for seven years. And I cannot understand the depth of connection one would feel from spending a lifetime with someone. I ask myself, what if we lived in a world where grief was a normal expression after experiencing loss? What if we lived in a healthy society that would hold and comfort the bereaved through
through ritual, ceremony, song, and dance? What if grief was a culturally understood emotion and tears of loss were supported and welcome from those going through the pain of loss? What if grievers were held through the process of grieving? What if it was understood that after experiencing a loss that the grievers are tender and need more love to journey through the shadow of grief? Speaking from my own personal experience of enduring countless deaths of those closest to me in the last seven and a half years, grief can grow us if we allow for the process to move through us. My father ended up dying tragically in March 2022, just four short months after the death of my mother. This was absolutely devastating to me. My dad was my world. Before he died, I didn't realize how much I shaped my world around his large, loving, and boisterous presence. He was a constant presence. So how could I understand how much he meant to me? I've been in a deep state of grief the last year and a half after my parents' death. I love my mother dearly, but my father was the one who was emotionally accessible to me. I mirrored him in so many ways. He was loud big in body and expression, unpredictable, goofy and crazy in the most wonderful ways. He drove me crazy and I simultaneously loved him with all of my heart. He was from Kauai, Hawaii, where I live now. His bright Hawaiian shirts were a metaphor for his large Portuguese loving heart. My mother was a stable and calm one in our family. When she declined as cancer and cancer treatment slowly ravaged her body, I realized how much she held our family together. She was a solid one who patiently endeared my father's occasional tempestuous moods. This year of grieving has cracked me open. I have learned once again just how grief pushes us to levels and layers that can hold exponential growth if we allow grief to move fully through us. Throughout the many deaths I have experienced of those closest to me in the last seven and a half years, I remind myself of Leonard Cohen's words. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. I allow the grief I feel for both of their deaths to creep into my heart. I allow it to transform into love. I know they are still and always with me, not in body form, but as my angel spirit guides, helping to lead me through my life. And for this, I am grateful. I am grateful to feel, I am damn grateful to be alive. I am grateful to feel grief. As when you feel grief, it is proof of the ultimate love. I love deeply and therefore I grieve deeply. And this is how it should be. This is normal. Grief is a normal expression of being in a human body, and the profound grief I feel for their death is an expression of the great love I was fortunate to experience with them. <clears throat> and so in turn, I give you permission to grieve the loss of your beloveds. I give you permission to grieve whatever it is that cracks your heart open, the death of a pet, the loss of a job, a house, a relationship, a situation, your health, a way of being, a beloved, the current environmental and social crisis, or whatever speaks to you. Please feel it, please express it, please release it. However you can, scream, cry, talk to a friend, get support, dance, 
plant medicine, whatever you need to do, let it out because this is not healthy for your body to hold on to. You deserve to heal and you deserve to shine. So thank you so much for listening. It is in me sharing my grief through writing about it and speaking about it that it helps me heal. So mahalo for the witness and so much love.